Hello and welcome to Let's Test Mods. This is just a revision of Gun Cuss Mods by Stupid. Three U's, three eyes. <laughs> Let's Test Mods is basically where I test mods and give a review of what they are about and pretty much what I think about them. Now, gun cuss or gun customization is a pretty intriguing mod. This is just any I don't mind it. I'm just using it for recipes. These are your basic essentials to getting started. These two are just kind of fun. I will be showing you later what they do. Uh, box parts need four iron ingots one gold ingot and four redstone or four iron four, uh, four redstone one gold and it gets you one box part now you need those box parts to make uh, such as the weapon box which requires a block of iron four box parts and four iron ingots pretty expensive in iron but most people can deal with it usually mid to late game and if you use any technical mods well then that's usually earlier game uh, you can make the mag box which allows you to have magazines I'll be showing you what that does in a uh, later part of the video you need three box parts five iron ingots and one block of iron still expensive but you can probably deal with it. This is the bullet box. Four iron, four box parts, and a block of iron. Arranged as so. This is the ammo box. It requires six iron, two box parts, and a block of iron. As you see, most of this requires quite a bit of iron, but also some gold and redstone. And the gun box, which actually allows you to customize your guns, requires four, uh, five of these box parts, four iron ingots, and it gets you that. And for these, manual mag filler is basically the ammo box, or... I think it's the ammo box or something. I'll show it later. And it allows you to basically fill your magazines one bullet at a time instead of the entire uh, magazine being filled or unfilled. This can also remove ammunition. And the quick knife, I don't think it has a recipe, but uh, if you're going for specific assault maps or basically gun maps, whatever you want, Usually you can have these. This, personally, I don't really much care for it, but it does work. Okay, let's move on to this. The scopes. You have the reflex, the cobra, the holographic sight, the PKAS, the M145, PKA, ACOG, PSO1, Rifle times six, the PKS zero seven, the rifle scope eight times, the ballistic times twelve scope, and the ballistic times twenty scope or twenty times. As you can see, these are all scopes, and they are put on the top part of the open box. I'll show you the recipe in a second, but these are just the boxes. Might as well just get these over with. This is the weapon box. Basically, this allows you to have the actual weapons. I don't remember what this info button is, but I'm guessing it's pretty much just going to tell you what exactly it is. This is the M16A3, I guess. Unfortunately, the guns that come with it aren't exactly the best, but or best looking, but they work. Basically, you put iron here, redstone here, and when you create the gun, it'll t consume a certain amount of ingots and redstone, and it'll give you the gun here. You can also switch through what type of guns 
you can have, such as the AEK971 and you can basically just go through them and different guns require different amounts of iron and redstone. And let's move on. This is the mag box. You put the gun that you had you just got from the weapon box in here, put some iron ingots, and it'll create the magazine for that type of gun. Such as if you have the AEK you can get AEK mags. Now they'll be empty. We do go to the next one. You put your magazine there, you put your iron ingots there, and your gunpowder here. And I'll create ammunition for that type of magazine for that type of gun. Now you put the magazine and your newly created ammo in here, and it fills up the magazine. Such as you can also empty it and put it back in. And it's just a quicker version of that. And this is the gun box where you can actually attach scopes, barrel mounts, and miscellaneous uh, accessories, usually like underbarreled items. Let's continue on with this. Recipe the reflex sight, RD, uh, red dot sight. I believe that's what that uh, RDS is supposed to stand for. I know it's a red dot sight type mod. Uh, glass pane, three iron ingots, and some redstone. Pretty cheap, pretty easy to get. This is the Cobra sight. It's just a slightly varied type of red dot, uh, red dot sight again. Requires the same amount, only in this uh, pattern. And you'll be seeing that a lot of them require the same amount for having the same scoping. Now this is the holographic sight. Uh, get this. The first four are more like close quarters. They're be uh, better for basically if you have an assault rifle and you're sweeping rooms, you're not sniping or anything. Requires three iron, two glass panes, one redstone. The PKAS hollow scope requires the same, only in this pattern. The M145 requires three iron, two glass pane, and one diamond. It's slightly more expensive, but it's the three point uh, four times zoom, so it's actually better for more of a medium range. It's not really good for long range still. And you get the PKA. I think it's the same pattern, just flipped again. Or same recipe, just flipped. And it's the 3.4 times zoom again. Again, these are more for medium range. The ACOG is times 4 zoom. It requires 4 iron, 1 diamond, two glass panes. It's mildly expensive, but still not as expensive as some of the later stuff, which you will see is quite expensive. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for this. PSO-1 scope, which is actually one of my favorite. It requires four iron ingots, just having the iron ingots in this pattern glass panes and diamond still times four then you start getting to more expensive stu uh, stuff which is five iron ingots diamond glass panes not too bad this requires a PSO one scope so that's one diamond there and then you have a second diamond that you have to put in here. Four iron and one glass pane. And you get this, which is the rifle scope. 
you got you saw the rifle scope times six. Now you get uh, the times eight, which is an additional diamond, a rifle times six scope, glass pane, and one iron ingot. And then you get to the really expensive things, which is the ballistic times twelve. These are probably best for really long range sniping, and unfortunately the guns aren't as accurate at that range so you pretty much have to really be very good at what you do requires two glass panes four iron ingots and three diamonds and yet that's not the most expensive because you have this the times twenty which is extremely far range mobs don't even spawn at the distance where this can see so this is pretty much only for PvP. You have three iron ingots, one diamond, one ballistic times twelve scope, and one glass pane. Pretty expensive. But I guess if you want to destroy someone from his base at your base, or if you want to shoot someone from your base, or basically you can shoot across a map. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, okay, we, now we go on to barrel attachments. The silencer, heavy barrel, rifled barrel, and polygonal barrel. Silencer, of course, silences. I don't think it has any effect on mobs being able to see you or hear you. I think it's just more for the PvP aspect. And it requires three slime, four iron, and you get a silencer. The heavy barrel is to increase damage, basically, for any gun that it can be attached to. This is best for if you're going for really powerful snipers that have a lot of damage and you want to make sure that no one can survive, not even the, uh, the people in diamond armor or whatever ballistic armor they may have. Or you could just do it on a pistol and cause more damage. Really up to you. I don't even know if this can go be on a pistol right now. I'll test. <laughs> Rifle barrel. I can't remember what this does, unfortunately, but it requires gold, and, uh, three gold, four iron. You get the rifled barrel. Uh, and the polygonal barrel. I'm guessing it's more for like maybe stabilization or more damage. I can't remember again. It, these are things that I haven't fully looked into, but uh, I just don't use them as much. I probably should. This requires six iron and one diamond, so this is probably an expensive and powerful item to have. And we move on to the underbarreled items. Now there's one more underbarreled, but it's in the next box. These are more like miscellaneous underbarreled items, really. Uh, you get the straight pull bolt. When you have a bolt action sniper, you can go into the zoom and fire, but you can't reload until you uh, come out of the zoom. This allows you to reload in zoom, so you don't have to worry about uh, basically getting out of your position to reload and then have to reacquire your target. Bipods. Basically they reduce a lot of recoil. I think I don't I think it's like 50 or 75 percent when you're uh, I guess it's sneaking when you're basically when you're holding shift you're able to fire more accurately and this is best used for like heavy machine guns or snipers. This is the foregrip it's not as good as the bipod, but it can be used for basically lessening the recoil of certain assault rifles. I don't think it works with pistols, but it might. And I guess snipers could as well. Pretty much any rifle type usually would use this. Uh, strong spiral spring. This increases the damage of pistols. The improved grip it is also used for pistols, and it gives a better... Uh, better recoil, I think it's the, 
I guess these are just kind of interchangeable for that, or I think this might just be for the pistol only version. And then laser pointer, which actually was a barrel attachment at one point, but it got moved to being an underbarreled attachment because people, I guess, wanted to have stealth laser pointers, suppressors, or whatever. And I guess it is. This just increases the accuracy of the bullets. It doesn't have any visual effects other than maybe a little red dot on your item. And that's pretty much it for uh, underbarrel attachments. I probably should go through the recipes actually. Four iron in that pattern gives you the straight pull bolt. Five iron in this pattern gives you the bipod. 5 iron in this pattern gives you the foregrip. 4 iron and 1 gold in this pattern gives you the strong spiral spring. 4 leather and a foregrip gives you the improved grip. This might actually be an attachment that might be better than the foregrip then. Maybe. Might just, I, as I said, it might just be for pistols. And recipe for this is 5 iron, 2 redstone gives you the laser pointer. And then we move on to explosives. Now, I probably should have uh, organized this better. I kind of just chucked them all in at once. There we go. This is the under, uh, underbarreled attachment M320. And it fires these 40 by uh, 46 millimeter SR frag grenades, and they're actually this is actually probably one of my favorite guns because you can actually still use this without being attached to a gun. But you'll see why I want that effect. I'm actually going to take that along with that. Uh, this is the RPG-7 v uh, V2, and this is just the rocket it uses. And the small, which pretty much I don't really much care for shoulder mounted uh, weapons, especially like the RPG. I really don't care much for them. The only ones I really will care about are the javelin and the small. So, and this is the mine, it cannot be created, but it can be uh, used in creative or given. It's perfectly usable. So I'm guessing it's probably just like for war games or something. And this is the uh, recipe for the RPG-7. Three iron, two wood, four redstone. And it's rocket, two gunpowder, three iron gives you two. Now this is an extremely cheap recipe for something that's very devastating. Surprisingly, this is the most devastating rocket I've ever seen for uh, basically just standard that cheap. <laughs> and you get this, the small, which is three redstone, four iron in that pattern. Now, I haven't tested this one yet, but I'm going to. And high explosive dual purpose rocket requires two gunpowder, three iron basically just a reverse to that. I'm guessing it's probably the same damage. And I'll even show you the mine as well. Now, for the most part, this stuff is actually pretty cheap for, uh, for what it is. Let's see what this small does. And to fire, you have to use uh, the left mouse button. To aim is the right. This one does not have a scope, but this one does. Pretty much most guns will have a scope. Uh, and it, yeah, that's about the same damage as the RPG, so. Yeah, they're about the same. Uh, these are really devastating, as you can see. It's probably. Explosion, uh, explosion radius of about 6 or 7, or explosion power, I guess. 
and they're pretty much about the same so yeah it's still pretty cheap for the amount of damage it does M320 is actually one of a uh, more favored ones just because you can you can do this That little explosion thing there. I think the texture has been a little messed up. It explodes when it's uh, after a certain timer or fuse. But if you have a distance, it'll explode instantly. This is actually similar to real life, where if you shoot a rocket, it's not just going to explode right there because that's a hazard that would allow people to run away from it. Say if it accidentally went off. And let's do this one. Manual mag filler. This one, it's not as uh, good as the ammo box, but you can empty to take ammunition from a enemy weapon, if it's the same caliber, or you can fill it up. Works with any of these. And funny enough, one of the main reasons I like these guns is that they can uh, share the same ammunition type and they can share ammunition across uh, and I'm currently under uh, over a explosion radius of one of these I know it's right here or something there it is and this also works on Enderman which is one of the only ranged weapons that will work on Enderman. Surprisingly, it's actually effective against them. And, as with normal, you can take, the, let's say, the AEK and put the undermounted one. You now have a grenade launcher on this. The rest of the keys are Control plus C would uh, toggle the M to uh, M20, M320. So Control C, you are now using the M320. Control V switches firing mode. So now this is a single shot. Oh, that was an accident. It's now burst mode. It's usually a three round burst and full. Some guns only have like single and they cannot be toggled. And then you have the quick knife. Control F. As long as you have this quick knife in your inventory, you can use the control F. And surprisingly, it's actually very effective, but uh, you have to be really up close, otherwise it doesn't really hurt them. I could be probably this far, and it wouldn't hurt them. But if you get within a good distance, I think it's about two blocks, you can actually hurt them. So against creepers, it'll one-shot them, but you have to be really up on them, and that's probably not the best idea if it misses. So overall, I think that's pretty much it for this. Let's see. I'm just going to take one of these and one of these. I'm probably going to go with the silencer, I guess. And I'll put additional mods with this. And you can build it. I now have a really specialized one. As you see, it's pretty overkill looking. <laughs> and yeah, that's the distance. Holding shift will allow you to stop breathing for a couple of seconds. And it, you can only do that every once in a while. But as you can see, it's really long range with this. 
and apparently the textures aren't working as well, but as you can see, the, the spread of these uh, bullets are not exactly the best for sniping. But overall, that's pretty much it. You can also split down, say you got an enemy's weapon and you like the silencer, but you don't want to have anything else of it and you don't want that weapon. Well, you can split it down and take that silencer or whatever you want. And say you want to put it, that silencer on your Glock 17. You know, uh, silence Glock 17. And the s sounds, textures, and pretty much everything of these guns can be modified and customized with uh, custom weapon packs. You can have as many guns as you want. And uh, every gun that you make will have a tab in the creative. As well as this. And you can actually create your own ammunition type and you can use that ammunition type for any guns that you make. So overall this is actually a very in-depth mod and it's one of my favorites. So I would have to rate it ooh, a good 8 out of 10 or so. Maybe even 9. I mean this is really one of those really nice mods. And he's still working on a bunch of addition, uh, additional parts to this, such as shotguns, which I'm excited, and multiple ammunition types for a single gun. So, till, uh, till next time, this has been Let's Test Mods, Gun Cuss Mod. Have a good day. See you next time. If you like what you're watching, subscribe. If not, oh well. Have a good day.